Hi, welcome to the Commercial Gas Engineer channel. In this video, I'm going to try to show you something about pumps that you don't know. Okay, changing these pumps here. They are single phase pumps. One's on the hot water circuit, one's on the heating circuit. Just going to isolate the power first, remove the lagging and so on in order to gain access to the nuts and bolts. There's my multimeter for checking for safe isolation. This is behind. So behind the pumps, there's labels behind it to identify which ones they are. Just having a quick little recce first before I start changing them because sometimes you can end up with the wrong pump ordered and so on. It's not a direct replacement. It's a dab pump that's going to be replacing this. We've got the pressure nominal number there and sometimes you can get the diameter nominal number. Sometimes the valves can seize. So this is the pump it's going to be replaced with. A dab Evo Plus. There's the pipe leg. If necessary, we're going to isolate further back down the circuit. This is the blanking plate if you're going to blank off the head of the pump. Just sizing it up to see if it will fit just to make sure. Although this measurement here, do you see the 250? That is labeled on the pump here. Do you see it? 250 after the F? So I need to make sure that we carry out safe isolation. Go off, off, off. Remember to lock off and label when you are carrying out safe isolation. Okay, just checking that this is dead. Make sure that there's no power on the live. Make sure there's no power on the neutral. So we're going to check everything. So remember to check your multimeter beforehand. And then once the pump's isolated, you can open up the vent. Spraying this up with WD-40 and giving it a chance to set for a moment. And then that should loosen up the nuts and bolts, making it even easier. Yep, they're moving fairly free, freely now. Gonna get another 19 mil on the bottom. Uh, unfortunately, there's some needles at this site. So this is, we're just making sure that there is no water left in there. And there's a little bit of water left inside here. Got to make sure the valves are not letting by and that they're definitely off. So just prising it up. Yeah, it looks as though the top valve wasn't shut. The bottom valve was, but the top valve wasn't shut properly. So here's the old pump on the floor. With the old gasket still on there. And this is where the new is. So remember we're changing two pumps. And sometimes you have to watch for the drop down of the flange. So the gap can decrease. So you might need something to help you. Either somebody or, or something to help you prize it. Clean the old to get on the new gasket. So we have a nice smooth surface. Remember to do that. And to clean above as well. So this is the new about to go in situ. In order to get the gasket, so just using the socket set here. Remember to tighten up in a diagonal fashion. So the pump is on and wired up and running. The other pump is on. The other pump kicked in. I need to look in the manual because it looks as though it's got like some form of battery in there. Or I don't think it's the capacitor, but it looks as looks as though it's got some form of charge in there because um, the other I shut the valves on the other pump so that it wouldn't sort of like back circulate because I noticed that it was kicking in, even though it's not wired up, it was kicking in. It had sort of power going to it for some sort of backup battery or something of that nature once it sensed flow from the flow switch. Uh, I want to look into that because I've not seen that before. Let me know what you know about that. Power back on to the pumps. And you can see the head pressure there. So getting the pumps back on before. So this valve I'm closing off so that there's no back circulation. And also I want to get the, because you can, can you see the power onto it? Even though there's, it's not been wired, it's been switched off. It senses flow and it's running. Okay, so let's um, look at this pump and identify some bits. So the number here, the 150, that is for the distance between the flange to flange. Okay, so it give, it's, it's giving you the measurement between from to here, for instance. The PC stands for when it was manufactured. So this was manufactured in 1998 and that is the week, week 30. 
usually the pump company or manufacturer just need two numbers. They're going to need the PN part number and the PC. The other thing that you need to know are these numbers here, that 20 and the 30. So the N stands for stainless steel. If you see an F there, it means flanged. But if you see NF, it means flanged stainless steel. The other detail is the 20. The 20 stands for the diameter of the pipework and the 30 stands for the head pressure gives you an indication of how much the pump can produce let's look at another pump here's one here and you have the diameter and the head pressure and down here you've got the hertz hertz remember that's how many pulses you're getting how many waves you're getting per minute down here you've got the microfarad symbol so that's the capacitor how much the microfarad should be on the capacitor and then you've got the amps down here in the different settings so this should be it's a guideline but you should be within 10 percent so for your maximum and 10 percent for your minimum so above or below you should be within 10 percent of your readings okay thank you for joining me leave some comments in the section below to, as to what i have missed out on the pumps until next time bye bye bye